Welcome to the National Government Services Provider Outreach and Education video on Hospice Levels of Care. The objective of this educational session is to deliver information and resources to hospice providers regarding how to properly report the levels of service codes on a hospice claim. The hospice program was initiated in 1983. With the inception of this benefit, hospices were required to submit only a small number of service lines to report the number of days and the level of care provided. This limited claims data has restricted CMS's ability to ensure optimal payment accuracy in the hospice benefit and to carefully analyze the services provided in this growing benefit. Starting in January of 2007, CMS implemented changes to the hospice billing requiring more detailed billing information on their claims. Change Request 5245, effective January 1, 2007, CMS required hospices to report additional detail on their claims. This was the start of many changes hospice providers have seen in the hospice billing requirements. Change Request 5567, effective July 2008, required additional detail on the claims for physician, nurse aid, and social worker visits provided to beneficiaries. Starting January 2010, Change Request 6440, this required the reporting of visits performed by therapists and certain phone calls made by social workers this change request also required that hospice report the length of visits made by nurses, aides, and therapists, as well as social workers. Later that year, in October of 2010, change request 6905 added an additional HixPix site of service code Q5010 for hospice home care provided in a hospice facility to supplement those codes implemented in 2007. As you can see, there have been many changes since 2007 in the billing of hospice claims and reporting of services. With all the changes over the years, CMS requires hospices to report on their hospice claims the level of care, the location where services were rendered, the discipline or the entity that provided service, line item date of service reporting, the number of units, the charges, and other coding that indicates the patient status code or unusual circumstances for billing that has occurred. For this tutorial, we will focus strictly upon the level of care reporting that is required. There are four levels of service that may be billed by a hospice provider. Before we start to talk about each of these levels of service, let's first discuss what a revenue code is. The National Uniform Billing Committee defines a revenue code as a code that identifies specific accommodations, ancillary service, or unique billing calculations or arrangements. In short, the revenue code notifies a billing system of the service that is being billed by using a specific four-digit code. When billing for a routine level of care for hospice, simply enter a revenue code of 0651. When billing for continuous home care, hospice providers would bill using revenue code 0652. Inpatient respite care is billed with revenue code 0655, and general inpatient care is billed with revenue code 0656. Now, it is also important to understand the units for each revenue code utilized. Note that routine home care, inpatient respite care, and general inpatient care are all billed on a per day basis, meaning that the hospice provider would bill one unit for each day of service. However, continuous home care is not billed per day, but instead is billed in 15 minute increments meaning that for each 15 minutes or any portion of 15 minutes over 8 minutes would be billed at one unit per 15 minutes. As stated, the CHC level of service is reported in 15 minute increments. Therefore, this code will have to be reported daily to show the amount of time for CHC. When billing levels of care, 
Each level requires a service date. For example, if there were 9 hours of CHC on October 1st and 10 hours of CHC on October 2nd, the hospice provider would report this to the system by reporting the date of service 1001 with 36 units to indicate that we had 9 hours of CHC on October 1st as there are four increments of 15 minutes per each hour and nine hours multiplied by four increments equals 36. Next, the hospice provider would have to create a separate line item to indicate the number of hours that CHC was performed on October 2nd. Since there were 10 hours of CHC, the provider would report 40 units for CHC on October 2nd as four times 10 equals 40. As stated, each level of care requires a service date. For Revenue Code 0651, RHC, 0655, Inpatient Respite, and 0656, General Inpatient, hospices must report the earliest date that each level of care was provided at each service location. Also keep in mind that a new line item must be reported anytime the location and or the level of care changes. For example, if we have a patient who started the month in RHC and then was moved to a GIP level of care and then returned to RHC all during a single month of billing, we would report this activity by creating three separate line items to show RHC, general inpatient, and then another line to show the beneficiary returned to RHC. A routine home care level of care is a day of care in which an individual who has elected to receive hospice care is at home and is not receiving continuous home care. This definition is taken from the CMS Internet Only Manuals, Publication 100-02, Chapter 9, Section 40, Benefit Coverage. When the manual states in the home, this does not have to be in the patient's residential home, their home could be a nursing facility, a skilled nursing facility, assisted living facility, etc. Routine home care level of service means that the hospice is providing a routine level of care and there is no requirement for the level or intensity of services that are being provided. The majority of hospice claims are billed at a RHC level of care. Some covered services under the routine home care rate are nursing services, medical social service, physician services, counseling services, medical appliances and supplies such as walkers, hospital beds, wound care supplies, etc. Also, hospice home aid or homemaker services or PT, OT, or speech language pathology service. Other services may be supplied by the hospice, such as music therapy, that would all be covered under the routine home care rate. Qualified personnel must perform all services, but it is the nature of the service, rather than the qualification of the person who provides it, that determines the coverage category of the service. We will discuss this a little later when we talk about general and patient services. Continuous home care is a level of care that is provided during a period of crisis that the beneficiary is experiencing and is necessary to maintain the beneficiary at home. As previously discussed with routine home care, it would be appropriate to bill a RHC level of care when the beneficiary resides in a nursing facility or a skilled nursing facility. However, since a CHC level of care is a level of care that is provided to maintain the beneficiary in their home, meaning their personal residence, it would not be appropriate to bill for CHC in a facility even though the facility is considered their home. CR 6778 was released in February 2010 and became effective on July 6, 2010 which provided instructions on where service for CHC cannot be administered. Hospice claims for days of CHC care, Revenue Code 0652, will be RTP'd if HCPCS site of service locations 
Q5004, skilled nursing facility, Q5005, inpatient hospital, Q5006, inpatient hospice, Q5007, long-term care hospital, or Q5008, inpatient psychiatric facility, are reported on the same line as these locations are not appropriate settings to bill for payment of CHC. CHC may only be provided in the patient's home and may not be provided in these types of facilities. Also note that CHC is not intended to be used as respite care, which we will discuss next. The purpose of CHC is to provide care in response to a beneficiary's condition, a crisis that requires additional care, service, or interventions as necessary to maintain the beneficiary in their home. With continuous care, there is a time element along with the justification of the increased services that has to be met in order to bill a CHC level of care. The Medicare time clock runs midnight to midnight. Therefore, the care provided must be a minimum of eight hours of nursing, hospice aid, and or homemaker care during this 24-hour period, which begins and ends at midnight, and more than half of the hours must be by a registered nurse, licensed vocational, or practical nurse. The hours do not have to be continuous, meaning that the time may be at different intervals during this 24-hour period. Let's look at an example. A nurse provides necessary care in response to a patient crisis from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. and then returns to the home from 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. This is six hours that the nurse has spent in the patient's home. The hospice aide provides care to the patient from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m., which would equal two hours of care. The combined hours for both the nurse and the hospice aide is eight hours. This could be billed at a continuous home care level, even though the time is not continuous. Important to note is the fact that the hospice must provide a minimum of eight hours of care during a 24-hour period, from midnight to midnight, with more than half of the care being provided by an RN, LPN, or LVN. If the hospice provides less than eight hours of care, the agency must bill services as routine home care. When determining hours of care, it is important to keep in mind that there may be times that one or more disciplines are required in the home to provide care. As long as the services are reasonable and necessary by the nurse, hospice aide, or hospice homemakers, the hours can be counted. For example, if a nurse is in the home from 10 to 2 p.m. administering treatments and monitoring the beneficiary, the hospice aide enters the home at 1 p.m. to provide personal care. In this scenario, the nurse and the hospice aide are at the beneficiary's home at the same time. Therefore, both would count their time in the home and document the services that were being rendered. Also, keep in mind that the hours of CHC cannot exceed a 24-hour period. In another scenario, if the nurse arrived at the patient's home at 10 p.m. and provided care until 2 a.m., two hours of care would be re recorded on one day and the other two hours would be reported on the next day. However, remember that if the time of care does not equal at a minimum of eight hours in a day with more than half of the hours of services delivered by a nurse, then the hospice could not bill a CHC rate but would have to bill at a RHC level of care. Let's take a look at our next level of care, which is inpatient respite care. This level of care is provided when necessary to relieve the family members or other persons caring for the individual at home. The care must be provided in a Medicare or Medicaid certified hospital, SNF, NF, or a hospice facility and can only be provided on an occasional basis. Inpatient respite services cannot be reimbursed for more than five consecutive days at a time. Every day of inpatient respite care beyond the fifth consecutive day is billed and paid at the routine home care rate. 
0651. CR 6778 provides instructions for claims with respite days, revenue code 0655. Because this level of care can only be provided outside of the patient's home, the CR states that claims will be returned to the provider, RTP'd, site of service codes Q5001 or Q5002 are reported, as the patient's home or an assisted living facility are not appropriate settings for this level of care. So it is imperative that hospice providers remember that inpatient respite care can only be provided in a Medicare or Medicaid participating hospital, SNF, hospice facility, or NF. These codes include Q5003, nursing facility, Q5004, skilled nursing facility, Q5005, inpatient hospital, and Q5006, hospice facility. Although CMS provided in the definition that this benefit is to be used on an occasional basis, there may be times when it is necessary to provide respite care more than once within a month. Providers will need to appropriately code the claim to tell the Medicare system that respite care occurred more than once during the billing period. Let's look at an example. Respite care was provided from July 1st through July 5th and then provided again on July 22nd through July 26th. Hospice providers would need to report the occurrence span code M2 twice with both dates of service as shown on the screen. Keep in mind that there may be times when it is necessary to provide respite care more than once within a month. Claims that are billed with more than five consecutive days of respite care will be returned to the provider. On that note, providers may not create three line items to show five days of respite, one day of RHC, and then return the patient to a respite level of care as shown on this slide. Always remember, care beyond the five days would be billed at a routine home care rate. There may be rare instances when a beneficiary is on a respite level of care, returns to routine home care, and then unforeseen circumstances occur and the patient is placed back on respite care. This is acceptable, however, the hospice agency should make sure documentation supports the circumstances and need for services. Claims will also RTP when two or more M2 occurrence span codes are reported on a claim with consecutive days that total more than five days. The final level of service to discuss for hospice billing is the general inpatient level of care. General inpatient level of care is provided in an inpatient facility for the purpose of providing care to a beneficiary in response to a crisis to the beneficiary that requires a level or intensity of care that is directed towards pain control and symptom management that cannot feasibly be provided or managed in any other setting. The care is thus provided in a Medicare certified skilled nursing facility, an inpatient hospital, or hospice facility. One thing to keep in mind when billing for GIP level of service is that the day of discharge is billed at the RHC rate unless the beneficiary dies or goes to another level of care. The claim will be RTP'd if the site of service locations identified on this slide are reported on the same line, as these are not appropriate settings for payment of GIP. GIP may only be provided at Medicare certified hospice facilities, hospitals, or SNFs. Keep in mind, if the patient is in a Medicare hospice certified facility, the appropriate code for GIP would be Q5006 and not Q5010. Let's review some of the key points from today's presentation on billing levels of service. Routine, inpatient respite, and general inpatient level of care services are billed one unit per date of service. Do not report every day as a single line item. 
Providers should report the level of service and the total number of days or units on each line item. If the beneficiary changes levels of service, providers will need to add an additional line item only when the level of service or the location of service changes. CHC is reported as a single line item for each day the beneficiary is under a CHC level of care, and the units will reflect the CHC level for each 15 minutes of service. Providers must have at least 8 hours in a 24-hour period from midnight to midnight, and more than half of the time must be by an RN, LPN, or LVN. When billing for an inpatient level of care, the day of discharge is billed at a RHC level of care unless the beneficiary passes away on the day of discharge or is transferred to another level of care. One general key point for hospice billing is that hospices are required to bill monthly, that is, bill for a calendar month. If the beneficiary came on service on March 25th and stayed on service through May 25th, there will be claims for March, April, and May. Please visit the NGS, Medicare University, and CMS websites for further information and significant resources regarding the hospice level of service for billing and documentation. Thank you so much for taking the time to review this important information regarding hospice levels of care. Stay tuned to the National Government Services YouTube channel for more educational opportunities designed for you.